गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल डू एक्सरसाइज थर्टीन पॉइंट वन वी विल डू इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन ऑफ एक्सरसाइज थर्टीन पॉइंट वन एज वी नो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ दिस एक्सरसाइज फॉर्मुली ऑफ दिस एक्सरसाइज नाउ टूडे वी विल अप्लाईज फॉर्मुली ऑन क्वेश्चन एज क्वेश्चन नंबर फर्स्ट लिमिट एक्सटेंडिंग टू वर्ड्स टू थ्री on the function x plus 3 as i told you the steps of the questions are first substitute the limit in the given function substitute steps i think you have to recall all the steps steps put given limit in function and check whether the function is of form 0 upon 0 form or not second check its form 0 upon 0 if it is 0 upon 0 if it is 0 upon 0 it means simplification is required simplification is required this simplification may be done suppose by substitution second suppose by rationalization suppose next maybe uh, trigonometric formula will be there to apply to apply trigonometric formula the function is trigonometric function trigo formula and uh, third one may be factorization is required i think these are the points which you have to remember before to solve the questions of the limit here in the question first as i put 3 at the place of x you are getting 3 plus 3 that is equal to 6 Now this is the answer. If you put here in the second question pi because limit is extending towards two pi, pi minus twenty two by seven. This will be the answer. Pi minus twenty two by seven. When you put here r tending towards one is there, you put r is equal to one. You are getting pi. And here when you put four, four fours are sixteen plus three upon four minus two. Nineteen upon two, and here if you put x is equal to minus one, you will get the solution. In the question number six, as it is written, x plus one whole power five minus one upon x. As you put x is equal to zero, you will get one minus one zero and zero upon zero form in the question number six. Now, when you put x is equal to zero in the given function, you are getting zero upon zero form. It means question should be simplified before to solve or to eliminate the zero upon zero form. Let's do zero upon zero form can be eliminated by two ways. First way, which I am just telling you, that is the way you can do the question. Put x plus one is equal to y. As limit is in uh, x, as x tending towards to zero. It means what zero plus one, which is y. It means this implies y is tending towards to one. The question becomes limit. Now you are change changing limit in y. Y tending towards to one, and question becomes y to the power five minus one upon. Now value of x is from here. The value of x is y minus one. Now this is the formula which we have studied. X limit. x tends to a x to the power n minus a to the power n upon x minus a that is n a to the power n minus 1 now this is the same question same formula is there limit is tending towards to a means 1 here so question answer will be what 5 into a to the power a is 1 to the power 5 minus 1 that is 4 5 into 1 to the power 4 that is only 5 and answer is Five. Now you can do the question. Question number six. 
Now question number seven, do your own because factorization, I just give you idea. Factor, do the factors and cancel common factor. Cancel the common factor. And you will get the answer. And here, factorize it, factorize denominator, cancel the common factor and you will get answer. In the question number nine, here, x tending towards to 0, put x tending towards to 0, you are getting, that is b only. As it is solved directly, this is not the 0 upon 0 form, it is b upon 1. Now, next one, question number, now 10. Question number 10 is, and you have to convert this question in the form, limit x tends to a, x to the power n minus a to the power n upon x minus a. For this, you have to do what? z to the power 1 by 3 minus 1 upon dividing by this. And the denominator, z to the power 1 by 6 minus 1 upon dividing numerator and denominator by z minus 1. Now apply the limit, z tends to 1. When you apply on numerator, on denominator, you will get what? You are getting... The formula is what? n a to the power n minus 1. n is here 1 by 3. 1 to the power 1 by 3 minus 1. Here it is 1 by 6. 1 to the power 1 by 6 minus 1. So question's answer will be? Answer will be what? 1 by 3 divided by 1 by 6. Or you can say 1 by 3 into 6 upon 1. This is 2. Answer is 2. This is the question number. Now do question number 12, we are on, 11 and 12, we are on. Now question number 13. As in question number 13, we have studied with the formula limit x tends to 0 sin x upon x is 1. If it is ax, it means multiplying and dividing by ax. Now this part, when you apply limit x tends to 0 on sin ax upon ax, and multiplied by ax into ax upon dx. Now this becomes 1 when you apply the limit. And x is cancelled by this. 1 into a upon b. Answer will be a upon b. Now you can do the question. This one, 13th question. Now come to the next. Further, we will do a few questions more. Try 14th question you are on. Question number 15. Let's do question number 15. As we have formula limit x tends to 0 sin x upon x is 1. Here this is x tending towards to pi. It means x tending towards to pi means x sin pi minus x upon pi minus x. You can't put it is 1. You have to put what? Let let pi minus x is equal to y. If x tending towards to pi, this implies y is tending towards to 0. Mm -hmm. So question becomes limit y tending towards to 0, sine of y upon, and this is pi becomes x pi, this is pi as it is, and this is pi minus x becomes y. And you can say sine y upon y, y tending towards to 0, it becomes 1. So it is 1 upon pi. This is us. This is pi. Okay. Now do the questions. Try the question number 16. Question number 17. Let's do the question number 17. As we know the formulae of the trigonometric formulae, cos 2x is equal to 2 cos square x minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sin square x. Now cos 2x minus 1, it means this is equal to minus 2 sin square x. And this is the formula. We can write cos x minus 1 limit is 
x turning towards 0. Now simplify this. Minus 2 as it is, sine square x can be written as 1 minus cos square x. This is limit x tends to 0. Cos x minus 1. Now you can write like this. x tending towards 0 minus 2. This is 1 minus cos x, 1 plus cos x. Apply the formula a square minus b square. And take common in the denominator. Cancel this minus sign. Hold this is cancelled. Now put x is equal to 0. Cos 0 is 1. And this is 1 plus 1. Now 2. And 2 into 2 that is equal to 4. Answer is 4. Now you can do the question number 17. Now let's do the question number 22 now. Question number 22. It's a good question. Question number 22. Limit x tending towards 2 pi by 2 tends in 2x upon 1x minus pi by 2. In this question, when you put uh, pi by 2, you will get 0 upon 0 form. Now, to eliminate this 0 upon 0 form in this trigonometric question, we will just apply the technique put x is equal to the limit that is pi by 2 plus h. Now here if here it is limit given x tending towards 2 pi by 2. If you put x here pi by 2 this implies that h is tending towards 2 0. You can solve it by putting the value of x is equal to pi by 2. You will get h is equal to 0. Is equal to 0 means tending towards 2 0. So the question become limit h tends to 0 tangent 2 into x is pi by 2 plus h upon pi by 2 plus h minus pi by 2. The question is limit h tends to 0 tangent 2 into, you can multiply by this 2. When you are multiplying by 2, you are getting what? Let's do when you are multiplying by 2, you are getting pi plus 2h. 2 is multi cancelled and 2h multiplied. Upon this is cancelled and this is h. Now what is tangent pi by, oh sorry, tangent 180 plus theta. 180 plus theta here. Tangent is positive and no change in the function. Limit s tends to 0. Tangent 2h upon h. Now you can do the question by multiplying and dividing by 2. When you are multiplying and dividing by 2, this function becomes 1 and 1 into 2 answer will be 2. Now you can do the question. Now come to the dual nature questions. Dual nature questions means Question number 23. Here is a question. Limit x tending towards 0 to the function fx and limit x tending towards 2, 1 to the function fx. We have to solve. But the question is given in the dual nature. Function is having two natures when x is less than or equal to 0 and when x is greater than 0. For the limit x tending towards 0, it means two functions are given. When it is tending from right, it, when it is tending from left. Tending from right, the function is 3 into x plus 1. And when it is tending from left, it is the 2x plus 3. It means we will write limit x tends to 0, negative 2x plus 3. Now put the value 0. 0 plus 3, this is 3. And limit x tending towards 0, positive means from right. Function is given 3 into x plus 1. When you put x is equal to 0, you are getting 3. Both are equal. So what? Limit exists. If left and right limits are equal, then the limit exists. If these are not equal, limit does not exist. Now for the x ending towards to 1 function. So here is only 1 function is given greater than 0 functions. It means limit 
x tends to 1, positive or negative, both. The function will be 3 into x plus 1. Here you can put the value. Now put the value, we are getting what? Here is the value. When you put x is equal to 1, you will get 3 into 1 plus 1. 3 into 2, that is 6. Answer will be 6. Now dual nature functions can be solved by just uh, taking left hand function for the left limit and right uh, function for the right limit. Here in the question number 24, Limit you have to solve for x ending towards 1. For left you have to take x square minus 1. When you put 1 here in the question you will get 0. And when in the right, when you are tending to form right, the function you have to take minus x square minus 1. When you put here the value 1. 1, one square is 1 but minus sign is there that is minus 2. One value is 0 and other is minus 2 both are different if both are different it means limit does not exist the question 24 does not exist you have to check whether left or right both limits are same or not if both are same limit exists if both are not same limit does not exist now dual nature function you can do the questions now question number 20 in question number 25, I just want to tell you how to solve the mod function. What is the mod function? We have studied in the chapter second. Mod function means it is x. If x is greater than or equal to 0, it is minus x. If it is less than 0. It means here you can split the function. When you put x upon x, it means you are taking x greater than 0. And if it is minus x upon x, you are taking x less than 0. In the case, this one, you are getting 1. In this, you are getting minus 1. And 1 and minus 1 are not equal. Limit does not exist. Okay. Now, you can do the questions now further. Now, question number 28. In the question number 28, it is given to you if the limit tending towards to 1 to this function is equal to f of 1, then what are the possible relation between A and B you have to find out. It means it is given limit exists. Limit x tending towards to 1 negative to the function fx is equal to limit x tending towards to 1 positive to the function fx and f of 1 all are equal. Now just check limit x tending towards to 1 negative less than 1. It means it is a plus bx. Limit x tending towards 1 positive means this one b minus ax and at 1 it is 4. Now simplify it, put the value 1 here. It becomes a plus b. It becomes b minus a is equal to 4. You can see here a plus b is equal to 4 and b minus a is equal to 4. Now add these two. We are getting what? A plus B plus B minus A. 4 plus 4 is 8. And 2B is equal to 8. And the value of B is equal to 4. If B is 4, then what is A? Put here in the value. A plus B is equal to 4. But B is 4. It means A will be equal to 0. This is the solution of question number 28. Now in question number 29, you have to find out the limit extending towards to A1. When you put A1 here, it means what? This is A1 minus A1, this becomes 0 and any number multiplied by 0 becomes 0. Or if you are calculating limit extending towards to A, it means the function becomes what? A minus A1, A minus A2, and so on up to a minus a like this you can do the question number 29 
The mod function, I have told you how to do the questions of mod. Now question number, I think uh, we have to discuss question number. 31st question is the question which I have to discuss now further. If the function fx satisfy limit x tending towards to 1 with the function this, then evaluate limit f x on x tending towards to 1. Okay. You can see here limit x tends to 1 to the function f x minus limit x tends to 1 on 2 is equal to limit x tends to 1 to the function x square minus 1 into pi. You can write the uh, question number 31st like this. Now, now you have to solve it. Limit x tends to 1 fx. We have to simplify. This becomes 2 if it is shifted to the right hand side. But it becomes this is equal to this is equal to this becomes and you apply the limit on this. This becomes 0 and 0 and this shifted. This is equal to now you can do the question number 31st. For 32, you have to do the question number 32 for two uh, points limit at x is equal to 0 and x tending towards to 1 for both. I here just want to tell you which functions you have to take. Limit x tending towards to 0 positive function will be what? 0 positive greater than 0. That is nx plus n. And limit x tending towards 0 negative, you will take mx square plus n. Now here when you put 0, you are getting n here and m here. If the limit exists, if limit exists, it means n and m should be equal. Okay. And for limit x tending towards the next number is 1. 1 positive means greater than 1. Then you take n x cube plus m. This is m. Limit x tending towards to 1 negative less than 1. That is n x plus m. When you put here n, uh, 1, you get n plus m. This is also n plus m. If you require these two are equal. So limit exists. Okay n plus m is equal to n plus m. These are the questions of exercise 13.1. Uh, I hope you can do the questions of now this exercise. What is the limit process? How to apply the limit on the given questions? Try these all these questions and do these questions here on. Now next topic is derivative. Derivative in short, I just want to tell you Derivative means, suppose two variables are here in the question, suppose x and y are the variable. If we want to calculate the change in one variable with respect to the another variable, then that is a derivative. It means what? Derivative means change in one variable with respect to another variable. In this chapter, when we uh, use the derivative sign, suppose y is uh, calculating the derivative of y, it means dy upon dx. We will write down like this. Or maybe y dash notation will be there to represent the derivative. Now, for derivative, we have few rules or few uh, formulas which you have to learn. First method, which is the first derivative method, which we discussed to solve the derivative of the given functions. Let's see. First derivative, or in definition method, we can say, suppose f is a real valued function, a is a point in its domain of definition, the derivative of f is at a is defined by, by this formula, limit h tends to zero, f of a plus h minus f of a upon h. This is a formula to calculate the derivative or here you can write f dash a you are calculating. 
when the, you want the derivative at a particular point that is a, then it is f dash a. If it is not the particular point, it is x or general point, then a is replaced by x. Now here is the question, example number five. In example number five, find the derivative of function that is 3x at x is equal to 2. It means a is equal to, here, yes, in the formula, a is 2. Now, formula for x is equal to 2, it becomes like this. f dash 2 will be equal to limit h tends to 0. f of a plus h becomes 2 plus h. Minus f of a becomes f of 2 upon h. Now, our target is to put the values. fx is equal to 3x. If you want f of 2 plus h, it means x is replaced by 2 plus h. This is a 2 plus h. f of 2 means f of 2 means x is replaced by 2. It is become 6. And simplify it. It becomes 3h upon h. h is cancelled. When you apply the limit on the constant, the value will be 3 as it is. Now same formula you will apply for other questions which are given. Find the derivative of the function. This function is f 2x square plus 3x minus 5 at x is equal to minus 1. Now the uh, a is replaced by minus 1. f of minus 1 plus h, f of minus 1. Now fx is given to you. If you want f of minus 1 or f of minus 1 plus h, what you will do? Put x, uh, minus 1 at the place of x or minus 1 plus h at the place of x. Now you will get like this. 2 into 1 minus h plus h whole square. 3 into 1 minus h plus h minus 5. This is f of minus 1 plus h. And f of minus 1 is this one. Simplify it. Simplify it. You are getting, after cancelling the common terms or cancel terms, you are getting that is equal to minus 1. If you want f dash 0, it means a is replaced by 0. f dash 0 is equal to f of 0 plus h minus f of 0. Now in function fx, you will put x is equal to 0 plus h. You will get this value. f0, you will get this value. Simplify it. You are getting f dash 0 derivative at x is equal to 0. That is 3. Now one part, one more part is given. Find out the value of f dash 0 plus 3 times of f dash minus 1. It is 0. This is the f dash 0 is 3. And plus 3 into f dash minus 1 is equal to f dash minus 1 will be equal to minus 1. That is equal to minus 1. So 3 minus 3 equal to 0. This is the answer. Now you can do the questions. When the particular point is given and at that point you have to calculate the derivative. Here is the example number 7. Trigonometric function sin x is given to you. At x is equal to 0 you have to solve. f dash 0 is equal to limit h tends to 0. 0 plus h. It means sin 0 plus h will be there. Sin 0 is there. Sin 0 is 0. And sin 0 plus h is sin h. Sin h upon h is 1. Limit h tending towards 0. Now you can do the question. Constant derivative is always 0. Derivative of constant term is always 0. It is written here. Function is constant function. And at x is equal to 3 or x is equal to 0, whether it is uh, any number is given, answer will be always 0. From here you can learn that the derivative of the fun constant function is always 0. If particular point is given, then I have given you idea. If particular point is not given, you want generalization. It means A is replaced by X. Same formula is there. F dash A is replaced by now X. X means general you are calculating. F dash X is equal to limit X tends, H tends to 0. F of X plus H minus FX upon H. You have not to change or replace X. A answer should be in a X form. 
Now you can do general questions also. These are the derivative questions. Simplify these questions. Now algebra of derivative of functions. How, what is algebra? If you want to get the derivative of two functions which are added or subtracted or multiplied or divide, this is the way to do the questions. Derivative of, derivative means d by dx means derivative of function fx plus gx can be done by taking separately these two functions. Or in the same, in the same way, when the two functions are subtracted, you can do the, take the derivative of the first minus derivative of the second. In the case of product, when the product of two functions are given to you, in that case, you have to do what? Take the one function as it is, do the derivative of the another. Derivative of fx and gx as it is, derivative of gx and fx as it is. If it is quotient form, if the quotient form is there, then I can say like this, d by dx of u upon v, two functions are there. So it is v squared, v as it is, derivative of the u, minus u as it is derivative of v. Same is here written formula. Now derivative of x to the power n function. Derivative of x to the power n. That is n x to the power n minus 1 by using the first derivative method or definition method you can solve the question. Now, how to do the derivative of the polynomial? As I have to just generalize all the things which I have studied in the previous pages, on the previous pages, first thing, derivative of constant term. This is constant. That is always zero derivative of x to the power n any algebraic form then n into x to the power n minus 1 and derivative of sine function that is sine x is cos x derivative of cos x is minus sine x which we will use directly derivative of tangent x is secant square x derivative of now cos secant x is minus cos secant x into cortex derivative of cortex is equal to minus cos secant square x now d by dx or you can see derivative of secant x is secant x into tangent x these are the formulae which you have to learn to get the direct solution of the given. Now here example number 13, polynomial is given. You will do question by taking derivative of first term, second term and then th third term. First term derivative means taking constant outside d by dx of x to the power 100 minus d by dx of x to the power 55 plus d by dx of x. Separately you can differentiate six as it is now here you will apply the formula this one algebraic formula 100 taking out x to the power one less that is 99 taking 55 out and one less n x having power one one taking out when you are subtracting it becomes zero so it becomes only one that's why the derivative is this one 600 into x to the power 99 minus 55 x to the power 54 plus 1. These are the basic formulae which we'll use in the questions. Then question number 14, derivative of Here, uh, apply direct application of the above theorem, tell that derivative of the function, this one. 
at x is equal to 1, the, fall, um, the value of this function equals this one. That is, derivative is, this is 0, 1, 2x, 3x square. This is written here in the question. At x is equal to 1, it means put at x is equal to 1. When you put x is equal to 1, you are getting the calculation that is equal to 1 to 7, 5. Now find the derivative of the function. This, these questions can be done by the first principle or definition method. But by direct uh, formula, you can uh, do the questions. Here, this is the u upon v form. Caution form is given to you. v square means denominator square. Denominator as it is, numerator derivative. Derivative of x plus 1 is, this is 1 and this is 0. Here is 1. x plus 1 as it is, derivative of x is 1. So it becomes minus 1 upon x square. Now for sine x, Now for sine x here, yeah, you have to just uh, remember this. When you are generalizing the formula for sine x, at x uh, when limit tending towards to 0, function is same. At the place of a, there is x only because we are calculating general formula of derivative of the function sine x. f of x plus h, f of x upon h. Now here, uh, sine x plus h minus sine x. Here you will apply the formula of the trigonometric formula sin x minus sin y. That is 2 cos a plus b by 2 sin a minus b by 2. You will apply here and simplify this by taking this 2 to the denominator. And now this becomes 1. And when you put here limit, uh, x is as it is, limit is 0. That becomes cos x. As I have told you, derivative of sin x is cos x. We have discussed here that the derivative of sin x is cos x. Similarly, do the question by taking tangent x and apply the formula here also. Here is also formula to apply. Trigonometric formula you have to apply, then you can solve the questions or derivative of the given functions. For sine square x, split this sine square x as sine x into sine x. This becomes u and this becomes v. u into v formula, u derivative, v as it is, v is derivative, u as it is. Now, the, uh, this is the Exercise 13.2 for this. I have told you how to do the questions. Uh, derivative of the function, how to calculate. Now you have to try the question number. Uh, questions of exercise 13.2. All these questions you have to try by, do, uh, by using the definition method. Or somewhere uh, the direct method you can apply to uh, solve the derivative of the function. Do exercise 13.2. Thank you. Have a nice day.